Welcome to episode 3 of the Retro Games Room series. So you might recall on the last episode, I was looking at the state of my SD retro gaming consoles. So I'm really not happy with the picture that I'm outputting for that at the moment. So I've been searching for the right perfect solution to enable me to get the best SD signal to my television so I can really enjoy playing those retro games with a, with a clear and crisper image, something that's going to look good to me but something that's just not going to have the original blur and horrible colour loss that the composite 3 pin plugin was giving me. So I have gone away and I've managed to source myself a set of the HD Retrovision component cables. I'm going to try and give you a close-up of this one. So this is the HD Retrovision Genesis cable, which is going to fit my Sega Mega Drive. So it's a lovely box this comes in. Let's pop this open. I am honestly so excited about this. It is crazy. So here, for the first time in my life, I've got my very first ever component cable. So I can't actually believe how crazy levels of excited I actually am from a cable. Um, that's how you know you're getting old, guys. But this cable looks outstanding quality. It's really, really thick. And the quality of the plug pins looks really, really decent also. It's got really good shielding on it. It's, it's made really well. It's got a nice functional... Um, box with a little switch and audio jack splitter in there as well. I'm, I'm not the most up to speed with this kind of tech and how it works but I'm reassured that if I'm going to try to get the best out of SD signal it is going to be through these component plugs which is going to do the job for me. So like, I'm really excited but I'm also like praying at the same time that this is going to work for me because I know that with these original retro SD consoles they're outputting in the real minimum like 240 to 280 depending on what the console is but the 240p resolution and the cable will carry this in its absolute entirety and not lose the visual quality that the composite cables normally do however I'm needing the TV in question to be compatible to actually carry this signal to be able to display that so I'm feeling a little bit nervous that this might actually not work um, and it's going to be a massive downer for me. But I am going to be doing a future video where I'm going to get some new hardware which is going to take these component inputs to enable me to upscale that to a digital uh, picture and also apply some line doubling as well so it should increase that visual satisfaction on the screen for me. And I think one of the issues with this signal and quality as well is, you know, normally it's meant for a 4x3, really small CRT television image. But when we're trying to use our HD screens, it stretches it up and stretches it out. So that's why even if I'm going to get really good picture clarity, it might not be the best that it could look yet. But when we get some more hardware, it's going to take it to the next level. So without further ado, let's plug this in. And I'm going to show you guys how my composite SD picture looked. And I'm going to then compare that with some video footage from my television screen to see how that looks. Now I'm not going to be able to plug these in via capture just yet. So we're going to see how the camera picks that up on the television screen. Now one concern I always have with this, even where it's through a capture card, where that is capturing that, and it is compressing that into video for us to visualize, we're, you're not seeing how that actually looks on the television. It's, it's different. And whatever my camera is going to capture, filming the television screen, that is going to be different as well. It is, you know, nothing is going to recreate how that looks to the natural eye. So let's get into it and let's see how it looks. I'm praying this works, guys. I've, like, I don't think I've actually been this excited over a piece of cabling in my life but to me this is kind of make or break it is going to kind of give me what I've been searching for and if it works I'm probably going to be playing Sonic the Hedgehog for the rest of the whole blimmin day. Okay so we're going to test on my little um, really old school acoustic solutions TV so let's 
put this to the correct source, so I'm needing to put it to component. So um, here we go, let's test Sonic. Go Sonic, go, go, go! Oh no! Okay, so we have audio, but 240p, the signal that it's sending is not compatible with this TV. So a quick change of plan and we've had to relocate and move the Mega Drive downstairs. Okay, so we've relocated the Sega to the floor and I've taken the HD Retrovision cables, the component out, and we've gone up into my large, large widescreen. So let's test how this works. Let's hit the power button. And I'm not expecting it to work on this TV, but let's see what happens. Oh, wow, we have a picture. Okay, I was not expecting this. Look how crisp that is. Blimey, look at this. Now this is plugged into like a 45 inch television and it instantly works. And that picture, now the picture here actually looks quite soft and smooth on the camera. But like I was saying in my last episode, where I'm looking at the screen, because it's on a large screen, the pixels look a little bit wider and blocky to the naked eye. So this looks really good actually just pointing on my camera at the television. Now I reckon if I get my new hardware to line scale, to double up the image, it is going to look even better to my eye on this large screen or on my smaller monitor upstairs, it will look absolutely perfect. So wow, I am actually really impressed with how that looks straight from the box, component or five pins straight in. Um, yeah, it, it looks really good. Like I was expecting the pixels to be stretched somewhat because like I said, it is like a 45 inch TV screen that that was being displayed on. So with some new hardware to line double, that is gonna look much better kind of to the eye in contrast with how it would look on a much smaller CRT television. So that is gonna be incredible to check out. A little bit disappointed it didn't work directly with my monitor up here where the component plug-in does display fine. However, um, a lot of screens are renowned for not accepting 240 or 280 straight through. Um, so with a line doubler, upscaler, through component to HD, I should be able to, no problem, get that to through play and the picture should look fantastic. So stay tuned guys for a future episode because there's a lot more work to be done with this. Um, let's quickly compare if we have a look at my original SD capture next to the videoing I just did of the screen there in component. Just to get a feel for it is looking much better than the composite straight plug-in, which is what I was expecting. And it just goes to show um, how much better the full normal SD image that would normally go into a CRT TV is. It's gonna look as close to the real thing as possible through original hardware into a, an HD TV. So I'm really excited with how this is gonna look at the end. Um, and then I'll later on be able to then do a screen capture comparison of how the full SD component looks going through HD compared with a direct HD, whether that's a ROM or coming from the Genesis Mini or coming from the PlayStation Mega Drive Classics collection. It'll be really interesting then to be able to compare the full range of outputs. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks for checking out episode three of the Retro Game Series. If you've seen episode two before this, you probably do want to check that out as well, seeing how we led into this. And episode one is up as well. If you're new to the channel, guys, please hit that subscribe button and stay connected with Guys Loves Games. And then I'll see you lovely people in a future video. Have a good one. Yes, mate.